young team. What, what's the message you want to send to the young players getting ready for the playoffs? Well, we, we, we are young. We have some rookie players. Uh, you know, the other thing, too, is I, I, I'm a rookie coach in, going into the playoffs. So it's a, I think it's a learning process for, for all of us. And for me, it's, it's a focus. It's a getting prepared um, and enjoy the experience. You know, this is what you work for. You work for these pressure moments, and, and you have to appreciate the pressure moments. And that's, that's what it's all about. Sometime with a young team, is it an advantage almost that they don't necessarily know what it's like until they actually go through it? We've got to be ready, though. I, the games towards the end of the year were faster, more physical. We talked about a playoff atmosphere playoff speed, but I don't think it's there yet. I don't think it, what we were seeing at the end of the season is not going to be what it's like, I think, come game one, because I think it's going to be faster. I think it's going to be more intense. Uh, there's going to be more pressure. Uh, whatever whatever we want, whatever adjective we want to use to describe it, it's, it's going to be better. It's going to be, there's going to be more. Todd, I know the ultimate goal is the Stanley Cup, but to get there, you have to be the first team to ever win a playoff game for the Columbus Blue Jackets organization. What would that accomplishment mean to you? Uh, what would the well just be one game? That's that's it. It's we got we got to win four games, and it's about winning this series. And all it would mean to me is, you know, if we happen to win Wednesday, it just means we're up one to nothing, and we got to win four games. You know, one one game doesn't win you a series. So we got to be prepared to put games behind us right away, good or bad, and get ready for the next game. Todd, do you have to be the, mo the more physical team in this series? Is that what you have to, to offer? Is that what you need to establish? You, you know, this, the team that we're playing, I, I guarantee you uh, they've won a Stanley Cup, and they know what it takes to win. They've played in... A lot of their players have played in big games, not only Stanley Cups, but they, you know, they have some players that just played in some big games uh, back in February. And I guarantee you, most coaches will go into the series or prepare going into Pittsburgh, and they're talking about we got to be physical, we got to do this, we got to do that to get these guys off their game. Uh, they've seen it. They've seen it before. Uh, I, I think it's part of our identity and how we play the game, and we we have to do that. But if we're going in with the mindset that we're going to try to physically intimidate or run them out of the building, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because they've seen it before and they've over, overcome it. We still need to do our things that we do well, and part of that is that. So it's, it still needs to be part of our game. We know you lost um, all five games in the regular season. Was there something common that you noticed in any of those five games or is it just five different losses in five different games? When we went back and looked at, at the five games, there was one game for us that we, they, they were clearly the better team. And that was, uh, I believe, the back-to-back -back game. I think it was the first time we played them here uh, at Nationwide. We lost three to nothing. We didn't generate much. They checked really well. Um, but I think other than that, the other four games, and you'd like to do more offensively. You'd like to do more defensively. but. We went back and looked and compared scoring chances, and there, there wasn't a, much difference. Uh, their power play scored some big goals for them, and to me that was a significant difference. Uh, the other thing is that these guys are a rush attack team, and uh, you know that's something that we have to address and, and be prepared for. A lot of their offense is, is, is driven through their forwards going and their defensemen joining the rush. Is there any danger at all with as young as you guys are that you, you mentioned physically intimidated, they wouldn't be? Is there any possibility that you guys could be intimidated? I don't think so because I think uh, the character in the room and the care in the room, um, you know, there's, there's going to be some things and some adversity that we're going to have to face. Some of it might be the first period in Pittsburgh, and, you know, kind of the unknown and, and playing our first game. Um, but that's what we have to overcome. But I don't, I don't think that we are a team because of our youth that we're going to be intimidated because of, of physical play. What's the worst, or what worries you the most about them? 
what they're capable of doing? Offensively, what they can do. Uh, you know, especially if Malkin's in. You know, they got two world-class centermen, top line, first line centers that can, I mean, I call them three zone players where they can pick the puck up in their own zone and they can carry it down the ice and score. So you, you possess that and I know Dan will sometimes use them together, which poses some problems. And then when you separate them, there's, there's a couple guys that you have to pay attention to. It looked like you were teaching quite a bit at times this morning. Tweaking the system a little bit specifically for the Penguins or just enhancing or dr drilling home what's already been there? When you get into these types of series, I, you can f really focus in more on what the other team is doing and what you need to do to counteract that. Whether it's their forecheck, their neutral zone, what, whatever it is. So we can get more specific with things. Whether it, it, it wasn't, it's not an overhaul. It's not, it's not changing anything. Uh, to me, it's pointing out little details of it. If we focus on a couple of these and we do them well, uh, again, as coaches, when we sat down and we were preparing for this, we believe that it, it, it'll help us in our game. It's been said by other coaches that if 87 and 71 end up on the same line, you know you're doing something right. In other words, that means they're struggling a little bit. You feel that way? And how important are your sentiment to, to creating perhaps a situation like that? Oh, I, I, I don't know if Dan uses them because uh, I, I, what I find with Dan at times when he uses them, I think some of it might, might be dictated by what's going on in the game, but I think some of it is dictated also by uh, times and periods uh, when timeouts are coming and getting them both out on the ice, giving them extra timeout on the ice and also playing together where it becomes that threat. Um, our centers are going to have to do a good job. And, you know, we got, I, I think, four centermen that can do the job. And as far as matchups, I might be looking for a certain matchup. But there's going to be times playing in Pittsburgh where or you ice the puck that who's, who's ever out on the ice are going to have to play against either one or both of those guys. Todd, the uh, return of Chris Letang, what does that do overall to the matchup and your preparation? No, it doesn't change anything. The one thing that he does do is uh, there's a real, a real NHL quarterback on the back of their power play. Uh, he can shoot it, but he distributes it, distributes the puck very well. Sees the ice, good vision. So, the, and he's a right shot. And you know, some so just being a right shot is is something that can pose some difficulties. Uh, He's also a guy that will help drive their team offensively. He's 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 thinking offense. He's a, he's a good defender, but he's he's like most uh, defensemen that can skate and shoot. He wants to get up in the play and create offensively. Todd, I know Columbus fans have sort of been hoping for some rivalries to develop for this team. Is there any truth to the idea that you can't really have a rival though until you have a good playoff series? I'll have to probably experience a little bit more. To, to let you know. I think there were some things that uh, happened this year, and I don't know where it goes from here based on, you know, until we get into next year, or maybe we see, a, we're fortunate enough to see a, a team in the second round. But when you do play back to back during the regular season, or you get into a seven game series when you are playing each other more, to, more than just three periods, some animosity can really build up. And I thought, you know, our, our game at home here against the Rangers uh, could set up for something like that. But when you play Pittsburgh, and there's going to be lots of Pittsburgh people in the stands, um, I, I think it's it could set up that way. Is it too early to know whether Felino or Umbi might make it back at any point in this series? We're anticipating them both being ready at some point in this series. Just don't know when. Yes. They won the season series. They've won Stanley Cups. Would, do you think that they look at you as a viable threat to them? I don't think they overlook any opponent. Uh, and again, the, the, the winners, teams that have won in the past, they, they know what it takes. And they got a, a very good coach. They got uh, good leaders on the team. 
I think they've been in many situations before. I'm sure they've been in a situation like, like this before as far as just playing against underdogs. And I'm anticipating them to be on top of their game and to come out and want to establish their game. Thanks. Oh. Yeah. What? Take us back to the hiring of Bilesma. You you hired him as an assistant under you in Scranton, correct? Yep. Um, what was that? How well did you know him before that? Why did you hire him? And just what does it mean now to be coaching against him in this in this setting? The way that that all kind of came about was I was hired in uh, Wilkesbury as a head coach. And I had interviewed a lot of uh, coaches for the assistant coaching position. And uh, Chuck Fletcher, who was the assistant GM in Pittsburgh at the time, I had spoken to him. And, and you know, Dan Bilesma's name came up. And he spoke highly of Dan. Um, Dan had previously worked with him in Cincinnati with the, with the Ducks. And then he was up in Long Island uh, with the Islanders, I'm working with Bradshaw. I can't remember the head, who the head coach was. Um, and I got into a conversation with Dan, just an interview type conversation. And the first thing I was struck by was his, his he comes across as a very intelligent, uh, smart guy. Uh, his vocabulary and how he talks. And, He's articulate, and but hockey smart, and you know not just able to talk and use words, but hockey smart, good ideas, and uh, to me right away there was a clear difference, clear difference that of the other guys that I interviewed that he was the guy, and when I talked to Chuck Fletcher, Chuck kind of reaffirmed uh, what I was thinking, my thoughts, and he. You know, you can't go wrong with this guy. So then it became an easy decision. And I, I learned a lot from Dan. And that's part of it, you know, when you're coaching in the American League and still at this level too. You know, your conversations you have with anyone. You know, I even, I even go to my, to my son's game and you can s certainly watch things and pick up things. Um, little details, maybe it's a drill and it gets you thinking about another drill. But Dan, Dan was a defensive forward. Uh, good penalty killer, and you know I was more of an offensive defenseman, and it it, it it seemed to mesh pretty well. So he had good ideas, and you know obviously we shared a lot of those ideas, and you know you watch his team play, and I think the way that we play or the things that we want to do, and it's different personnel, but I think there's similarities as far as how you want your team to play. What's your relationship been like the years? Uh, we. We talk. I got a lot of respect for Dan. Um, we don't call each other every day. Uh, I was fortunate enough and honored that he, you know he considered me to help him out in, in Sochi uh, back in February. And when I was the, the 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 good thing about that was I was able to watch him. He was the head coach. I was the assistant coach. And. When we were in Wilkesbury, I was a head coach. He was the assistant, and, and role is a lot different as an assistant coach. And I was able to watch him and listen to him as a head coach. And he is certainly—I'm not going to say he's come a long ways because I—I I, I think he's a very good coach and a, and a smart coach. But he—he he did a great job. He did a great job with that team uh, over in, in Russia. Yep. I, I don't think you can go through life thinking, you know, if I would have stayed here, if I would have done that, uh, you, you know, that, that'd be, you're going to second guess yourself on every decision that you make. Uh, I don't regret anything. I mean, I'm here. I'm in front of you guys right now. This is my road. This is my path. And I'm enjoying it. I love everything about Columbus. And, you know, it's, you, you know, you have failures, you have your downs, but certainly the ups. You know, I'd, I'd certainly take care of the downs.